This is the Unihacker, a new single board computer from DF Robot, which is a bit different to the ones that I usually take a look at on this channel. The Unihacker is designed to bridge the gap between a traditional single board computer that runs an operating system like Linux and a microcontroller like an Arduino. It's actually got both of these on board. So it has the flexibility of a single board computer, allowing programming and running programs directly from the device but it also has the timing reliability and robustness of a dedicated microcontroller. Let's take a look at the hardware first. At the front is the 2.8 inch touch display, and along the top of the display is the light sensor and microphone. And on the back is the processor, which is an RK3308 64-bit 4-core processor running at 1.2 GHz. So it's not exactly a powerhouse, but it's plenty for what the Unihack is designed to do. It's also got 512 megs of DDR3 RAM and 16 gigs of onboard eMMC storage. That is coupled with a Giga device RISC-based microcontroller running at 108 MHz. This also has 64 kilobytes of flash memory and 32 kilobytes of SRAM. On the back is also a micro SD card slot, a range of plugs to connect sensors and actuators to, as well as a buzzer, gyroscope and accelerometer. Along the edges we've got two push buttons on the right hand side, and then a home button on the left to navigate through the menus. These are also programmable, and can be used to add functionality to your projects. Along the bottom is the edge connector. This is essentially an expansion connector that allows access to additional I.O. pins and interfaces. This connector follows the same format as the one used on a micro bit, so I assume it would be compatible with most of the expansion boards available for that platform. DF Robot also make this silicon case for it. It fits around the device snugly while still allowing access to all of the ports and sensors. It also comes with a removable protector for the edge connector at the bottom. You can get it in red or green as well if you don't like the black. The Unihacker comes preloaded with its operating system, so you just need to plug it into your computer or a power source to boot. Once it is booted up, the buttons along the side, along with the home button and touch display, allow you to navigate through the menus. You can use these to access documentation or tutorials, run programs directly from the device, connect the Unihiker to your network, or make changes to settings. Programming the Unihiker is done through a network connection with a few different options. It can be directly attached to a computer through a USB cable and can then be accessed as an RNDIS device with a fixed IP address. Or you can connect it to your Wi-Fi network and then use a computer, tablet or even your mobile phone on the same network to program it. You can also create a hotspot on the Unihiker and connect to it directly from your computer, tablet or phone. If none of these options appeal to you, you can even plug in a USB Ethernet adapter and connect it to your network via an Ethernet cable. I'm going to go with the first option, so let's plug the Unihiker into a computer and try load a program onto it. As mentioned earlier, if you connect the Unihiker to your computer via USB, it can be programmed using its fixed IP address. We can also enter this address into the browser on the computer and use it to access its local web service. From this page we can access documentation and tutorials, toggle services on or off, configure its network connections, and even upload files to the device. We're going to try create a basic program to run on the Unihiker using DF Robot's programming package called MindPlus. After starting a new blank project, we can add the Unihiker as an extension and then connect to it. MindPlus will then automatically establish a connection and update all of its required libraries. We can then either use the drag and drop interface or the code area to make up a program. Let's start by creating a program to show the level of light detected by the onboard sensor. We'll do this by just dragging function blocks in from the toolbar on the left, and we can then make any necessary adjustments to the parameters. Then we click on Run to upload the code to the Unihiker and execute it. So that looks like it works, and it took less than a minute to program. Now let's try building something a little more complicated. 
I'm going to use a BME280 environment sensor to display the ambient temperature, pressure and humidity on the display. We'll start by plugging in the BME280 sensor into an I2C port on the Unihiker. We can then add the BME280 extension to the project. This tells the Unihiker to import the libraries needed to communicate with the sensor. It also adds the function blocks to the toolbar on the left to get information from it. Now we can drag and drop text and fields to display these on the Unihiker. I've included an image of a room as a background for the environment monitor. As we did previously, we can click on run to upload the code to the device and we can then see it running. We can also take it a step further in Python rather than using block coding. Let's try turning on a fan if the temperature gets too high. For that I'm going to add a relay module to a digital port on the side and I'll then connect the fan to the relay module. Now we need to write a script to turn the fan on when the temperature exceeds a certain set point. As a starting point, I've just copied the generated script from the block code. I've then added some additional lines to define the digital pin for the relay and an if statement to turn the fan on if the temperature exceeds 25 degrees. Let's upload it and try it out. The relay module is initially off as we're below 25 degrees. If I put my finger onto the BME280 sensor, it'll warm it up. The temperature will then exceed the set point and the relay should switch on. When it cools down again, the relay will turn off. Now if we connect the fan to the relay, the fan should then come on automatically when we do the same thing. So you can see from these examples, it was really easy to get this project up and running on the Unihiker, and there's a lot of flexibility to easily build upon your project. You don't need to have an advanced knowledge of programming or electronics to get some simple projects running on it. I also really like the flexibility in programming options, even being able to program it using your phone or tablet. Once you've uploaded a program to the Unihiker, it's stored for you to rerun directly from the device at a later stage. Let me know what you think of the Unihiker in the comment section below, and if you've got any project ideas you'd like to see me try on it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials, and reviews.